and the recording has begun and you can speak and you're free. Um, there will be no uh, judgment here of opinion and perspective. Uh, if anything, we'll debate things. Um, let's do introductions real quick. I'm Eric Basir. Uh, I'm a, a rail car repairman at Howard Shop uh, and uh, used to be a train operator at Howard and then Kimball. Was also a flagman and a customer service assistant. And go ahead, Kathy. Okay, hey, Mel. I am an Eric. I'm a retired switchman. Um, I worked out of Howard Street. I, re I retired a couple years ago. I had like um, 36 years, I think, or 34. Anyway, yes, I'm glad I'm retired. All right, Mel. Yeah, hi, this is Mel Chavez. Um, I'm actually a part-time bus operator. Started here back in uh, August of 2019. So I've been here for uh, like 15, 16 months. And before this, I was a, a semi-truck operator, semi-truck driver for about 15 years. Oh, and then what happened? Did the business close or you decided? No, no, better? no, I, I decided to make a change, but oh. uh, I'm trying to, uh, <laughs> I'm a re a regretting and changing. I don't know why, but it's, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it just uh, took a big turn for me, um, mm. uh, uh, money wise and everything. So it affected me a lot. No. Oh. But um, hopefully things change soon. So we'll see. Yeah, I hope so. Mel, you, you're, um, you're, you've been part-time now for uh, over a year. Yes. And um, uh, do, do you have a family? I do. I have a wife and two kids. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you're, you're, you, you don't even get dental. Uh, no. We don't get nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no dental. Um, yeah, no dental, yeah, no, uh, and that's what I need right now. I need some dental, but I haven't had anything, so I can't get anything done right now. Even if I gotta get anything done, I gotta pay out of pocket. Man, yeah, yeah. Um, and and you don't have, of course, your pension time isn't counting. Were, were no. you able to sign up for the for the four hundred one k or? Yeah, they offered that at the beginning, so yeah, I'm doing that. Okay. Yeah, that's what I made sure I did when I was part. I was I just I'll be a year full time, so mm -hmm. part time before that. Okay. Um, and then it's funny, Mel. I became uh, so I was a CSA, right, customer service assistant at the stations. Yeah. And, and uh, I um, became a flagman. And like you know, and the pay went up really nice. I went from thirteen something to nineteen something. And mm -hmm. uh, they said, oh, congratulations, you know, and, <laughs> and uh, by the way, um, uh, you're not going to be able to keep your health insurance, your family <laughs> health insurance. So oh, the wow. flagmen, you know, we protect r workers on the right of way on the tracks. Yes. Uh, and uh, they, there's no family insurance for you. <laughs> it's crazy, man. You know, it's just, and it, it's just that, and the part-time jobs that we really got to, you'll see in the, uh, when you look in your agenda, Mel, at your own mm -hmm. future, we have a link for something called the worker's contract. And mm -hmm. in it, uh, that link uh, is actually um, a member uh, made contract. We are now on the rail and the bus side, we have the same contract. We're in the same union. We just have a different local name, local number, and we have different mm -hmm. officers. Okay. Um, and of course, yours is much bigger than the rail side. Um, and and look at that workers' contract if you if you can. Article three point six. Uh, we've made a lot of uh, heavy-handed changes to the part-time section, uh, basically limiting part-time to six months. You know, if you got a good record, you've been coming to work six months you go full time in your position. And uh, of course, part timers uh, have to have dental because your teeth, you know, are linked to your overall health. And it's ridiculous yes. that part timers have no dental and got bus. I met a bus operator that's uh, two years part time. 
it's just it's crazy. Yes, some of, yeah, some of them are over two years right now, especially uh, right uh, right after the pandemic started. They stop uh, turning over people. Some of them are even over two years. Yeah, and and same with the flagmen that are going to train operation, train operators. We got a bunch of them still part time. Um, hey, yeah. Can I can I got a question? I read on someone's comment that this person from the buses said that there was a big hiring, he might have said spree, a big hiring push being made uh, on the buses. Is that true, Mal? Is it like 241 numbers? They're hiring a bunch of part-timers, but did you say they were turning them over or they're not turning them over? No, they, they they actually start turning over a few, not many, but uh, I have been looking at the postings that they have from the main office and they are they are hiring people. They are hiring bus operators because I've, I've been, once in a while, I've, I look to see what's new, what new postings they put up there and uh, they do, they are hiring. Well, that's pretty interesting. I yeah. can't figure that out. I can't figure that out because there's all this news, and tell me what you think here. There's all this news about uh, the city budget and the state budgets. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder what, what wages the CTA is hiring those bus drivers at. Is it the same that you started at, Mel? Or what yeah, What's yeah it's, the, it's the same, it's the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kathy, uh, Kathy and Mel. Um, I'm just, I just popped up the, uh, the transitchicago.com uh, jobs listing page and bus operator is up there. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, starting pay is 23.44 an hour. Yeah, that's where they started, yes. Yeah. So, so Kathy, the, 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 the wages for part-time bus operator are still contractual. They're still governed by that. So, um, you know, but the benefits because of the, the contract has expired have not improved. So, you know, Mel it still has to pay for dental out of his pocket. <laughs> yeah. You know? So it's like, Oh, the contract is, it expired a year ago, but, but it's still in force. Yeah. But it sucks. The contract <laughs> sucks. <laughs> hey, you guys, I have been more people retiring. From from the bus side, do you know, Mel? Have there been more retirements or more firings? Uh, with the location I am, yes, there have been a, a bunch of operators retiring, and some of them, yes, have been fired. Uh, I know that our garage, I'm out of Forest Glen. There, I have heard that they said uh, there are about 50 to 60 full-time employees short. And right now, uh, we're actually doing the picking. Tomorrow is the picking for part-timers. Um, our number of part-timers is around 90 of them. So they only gave us a pick of about 58. 58 uh, picking uh, um, schedules. And the rest of us has to go to the extra board probably to cover those mm -hmm. shortage of uh, full-time employees. Okay. Um, hmm. You see, and it's, 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 it's just too much, you know, <laughs> that's why we have to limit we in our contract, we have to say, after so many months, that's it, you turn them over, you know, to per, hey, man, you know, <clears throat> you got to do it because people are living in poverty. Mm -hmm. man, you can't take care of your teeth. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's poverty, man. That's that's that sucks. Yeah. Right. And and for our union officers to sit here and keep telling us, be happy you have a job. You know, it, it's just it's infuriating. Uh, we have we have a guest, uh, we have another guest. Now now I want to introduce you. Michael, you there? Michael Bente? A man. Okay. So so Michael Bente, uh, everybody, he is a guest. Uh, and supporter. He's got a coalition in Philadelphia with the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transit Authority, SEPTA. Um, and he's a member of local TWU 234. 
And like, like our unions, his union office presidents have canceled union meetings. And not only have they canceled union meetings, but they have canceled officer elections. Oh no, oh well, no, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, actually not officer election, uh, uh, union, shop steward election. Shop steward, okay. So, um, and one of the, the main reasons why they're doing so is because uh, the Department of Labor don't oversee shop steward election. Um, they only oversee uh, officer election, which consists of president, uh, secretary, treasurer, um, delegate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, which I believe that that law need to be changed because uh, shop steward election is just as important, if not more important than the president election, being as though, uh, you know, this is our coworkers that, you know, the first line of defense is who? The shop steward, right? Supposedly. Yes. Yes, thank you for the correction, and 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 that's outrageous, you know. And and, and I I want to apologize, you know, for for joining late. For some reason, I thought it was uh, eleven, but um, yeah, I apologize for joining late. Yeah, you rounded up ten thirty, eleven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, of course, as Mel will tell you, uh, uh, you can't leave thirty minutes late though if you're an operator. That's a problem. Right. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, 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 Michael, we won't give you a miss, but there will be a written warning. Uh, check your email. <laughs> oh, look, you wanted to say that so bad. Uh, uh, su Supervisor Eric, Supervisor Basir, how you doing? Shut up, <laughs> obey, be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Be quiet or I'm going to call the union president on you. <laughs> well, you know, I, I actually spoke with the union president uh, on Friday. And um, oh. the only reason why I even, and he even called me was because I, I, I CC'd his, the email to the international, also the Department of Labor. So he called me and, um, you know, we talked, but, you know, we ain't, like the discussions got nowhere. The bottom line is we uh, won't have meetings. We haven't had meetings since February. I put... Uh, suggestions out there. Um, there's numerous way, ways we can conduct meetings, such as, you know, virtual through Zoom, et cetera. Um, and I also put some ideas out there to have our shop steward election. So, uh, you know, I want to run, I'm actually running for shop steward for one of the positions, the chief uh, shop steward at my, um, you know, my location. So uh, I, I think it's, it's a part to do with that, you know, because I was his uh, main opposition the last election, you know, when I ran for president and a lot of people, their uh, biggest gripe about me was, oh, I, you know, I never was a shop steward. So here I am, you know, wanting to go through uh, the ranks, sort of say, right? Even though I don't really think that, uh, you know, it, it, it does, it's not going to make you or break you, but okay, I'll, 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 you know, I'll go through the ranks, I'll become a shop steward. So here I am trying to be a shop steward and um, they're playing games. Bottom line is, could you imagine if Donald Trump postponed the election? The outrage from that. So why are we allowing these union leaders to supposedly so-called have our back and supposedly be all for democracy to get away with stuff like this? Yep. So, um, Michael, uh, give us, if you could tell us real quick, what, what responses did the president of your local give you to your suggestions? The, well, he didn't give me no response. He just said, I'm not doing it. Flat out. Oh, I'm not doing nothing. Yeah, he just said, I'm not, well, no, I don't agree with it. I'm not doing it. That arrogant, high horse attitude, you know, he didn't, he didn't want to even entertain any suggestion whatsoever. So, yeah, that's you what know, they but did. after, you know, I, I kind of was like, you know, you know, I wanted, uh, you know, I didn't want to end on a bad note. So I kind of was like, you know, like, you know, what do you kind of ask him? Like, what do you think we should do? You know, actually have questions, putting him, you know, in a more, you know, we just having like a discussion type of thing. Because initially it was like back and forth, you know. I, I, I was putting stuff out there and he was going on attack mode. He was defending himself and then he was naturally going on attack mode with me. 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, and that's what we got to do. I mean, we got to deal with them, and they have to deal with us, and we got to try to make some progress. But at the same time, we just got to go ahead and take initiative because, you know, we're dying out here. Our jobs are on the line. Our lives are on the line. We have so many part-timers in, in Chicago, people living in poverty, having to do multiple jobs. Um, so we just got to take initiative. If the officers want to go along with us, great. If they want to support us, great. But if not, we just got to try to make it happen, you know, and take action. Um, speaking of which, some of the efforts that, that co-workers are doing are really inspirational. I wanted to tell you all about some of this stuff. Uh, first of all, one of our co-workers is a, tr a, tr a female train operator um, on, at, at 63rd National on the Green Line named Jamie Thomas. And she made a petition uh, uh, protesting unfair or unjust train operator recertification test. Now, Mel, I'm not sure if you got this yet. Maybe two years you'll have to recertify. Have you done a recertification yet? Not yet, no. Okay, that so will be next year. Yours will be coming, and I wouldn't be surprised. They, they, the, 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 ma the managers of instruction, uh, development, or whatever it's called, uh, totally redid the op the train operator recertification and i heard yeah yeah it's a real real you know uh uh hardcore yeah because i know one of the operators he just took it yesterday he went in and he says that they told him about 50 to 60 percent uh were failing yeah um, yeah so in in so so i'm sure he's mentioned there's people being suspended and uh, being brought up for uh, hearings for termination. Yeah, it's getting bad. And some of them have got over a decade of, of safe service, reliable service, you know, and they're just being stressed out. And so she, she made this petition and I, and I helped her, you know, I assisted her with it, with the writing of it, but she had the ideas and the thought and the motivation and the drive. And, um, uh, where demand, she she said that we're where those who signed the petition are hardworking, safe operators who are being suspended unjustly. The new test has hidden errors that make it impossible to pass. There are imagine like you got such and such answer wrong, but they never had it on the test, but you still get hit for it. Mm -hmm. um, and so our union is actually in the midst of our union officers have uh, set up a uh, class action suit to deal with those some specific points. But this position, this petition is actually demanding more. And that is that operators should not be forced to test for qualifications in which they no longer work. So in her case, she was made to do a whole nother test for flagging. But she's not a flagman. She's a train operator. OK, that's not fair. And she doesn't pick any kind of flagging job. Um, and she's not assigned it either. Uh, coworkers are enduring unnecessary stress for termination. Operators are, a lot of operators, because of the social distancing, they, they're, they're not allowed to sit in the break room. So they're sending them out to the different stations. <laughs> it's like, well, where can I sit at the station? Uh, out on the platform. Really? Okay. And I, and I know one of the bigger issues right now is when we go on fallback, we don't have any warming buses. So a lot of the times, it's just very complicated, you know? Yep. And yep. now with this uh, winter weather kicking in, it's, it's, it's worse. Yep, yep, yep. And, and uh um she she said the demand now is for the president of the unions to uh, uh call or the president of the 308 to call for an emergency conference call to help operators choose a course of action based on these demands all lost pay restored for operators who were harmed from their test results all punishment removed from our records for failed tests operators waiting for test dates must be in warming trains or warming trailers warming buses. Uh, local 308 must have a member-led committee to help the CTA design a new fairer test that cannot be used to punish. 
or terminate operators. Now, let me jump to the other one. So Brother Joaquin, uh, he's a bus operator out of Forest Glen. And I think maybe you saw the petition, Mel? He put a petition. Oh, that warming buses? Yes. Yeah, that's yes. his petition. And so so he, uh, the three of us, me, him, Kathy, we uh, kind of, you know, got that going. So he's he he took that, he maxed that out. So he's really pushing on that. I'm not I'm not sure if I saw the um, one of the uh, union stewards. I don't know if it was Jack or Orlando. They had something like that on their hand. Were they supposed to have that? Were they the ones doing it? No, right? They had something like that on their hand. Uh, about signing up for warming up warming buses. Hmm. I don't know if that's something else that they had going on there. Well. I don't know if it's exactly connected to the petition. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what garage are you out of? Forestland. Yeah, so you're right there with Joaquin. Yeah, but I'm saying that he's the one who was doing that, not that union stewards, right? Uh, when did you see the union stewards do it? I think like two days ago. Yeah, that, that would have been. Know, I know they had a list. That. I know that they had a list and they, had, they were asking some operators to sign it. I didn't sign it because, but I overheard something about warming buses. Okay. Uh, it's probably inspired by Joaquin because the, the, <laughs> okay. he, he kind of pissed off some people. And we, we did that too. Uh, we, <laughs> we're a part of that because the, the union officers are very uh, insecure, generally, not all of them. And they don't like when, when members take initiative. You, you know, Kathy, Kathy. Right? What? What? The officers love it <laughs> when you take initiative as a member, right? They love it? They encourage that? Uh, no, they don't. <laughs> hey, um, um, kind of backing up like, a little uh, bit. No, they don't. Can we talk about something more important? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they don't like it when we take initiative. But what happened with Jamie's petition? Did, did, did only just people at her terminal know about it? Or did it, did it, did it reach a wider audience to have okay. people in Braced it? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm rushing. Thanks for uh, pulling me back. Um, I'm helping her with it, and we're trying to get other people to help her with it. <laughs> so I, I filled this up with Howard. I went, I got this Howard train operators. I visited the train operators. <laughs> Some of the union bosses that were there, they were not happy at all with this petition. Hey, I got a question. Do you think she would agree? To have it posted like on the two forty one three zero eight real talk page. She she right now this is her baby right, and so I brought these things up to her, and I'm I'm bringing that up, but she really wants to keep it like a person to person thing on paper. Okay. You know, right now I, I was saying let's do a video, let's do you know this and that. She's like, oh, let's just do this right now, and I'm like, okay. Oh. And then, can I ask you one more question? Who does she plan on giving it to? The union? I, I can't remember. The union? Yeah, this is actually, a, yeah, this is a demand of our, of our union president. Okay, great, great. It's a demand on them. Okay, and it's kind of open-ended. It can go for a long time. You know, yeah, until yeah. You get a whole lot of signatures. And, and that's why I'm so happy. It's like, there's her, Joaquin. These are people that, that are like, me you know what i mean they're just like right ordinary people they don't have any position they're like they're not popular so they're not well liked so oh, they're, they're not just doing stuff mm -hmm. right they're just doing good things you know and that's what we need because that's yeah and 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 i want to i want to give you guys an update of what i'm doing since you guys are talking about petition i got a petition going around um and this is pretty much um trying to get the, the union president to uh, conduct virtual meetings. So, so far everybody, you know, that I approach, I approach uh, various depots, bus depots, uh, maintenance shops. And I would say I got a, about a 90%, 90% rate of uh, people who are signing, which is pretty high. Um, so everybody is, is, is pretty much, um, you know, they want it. They're not, I, I don't think they're going to really push as hard as I am, you know, because, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of us are just too strapped with time. But when I see you guys and you guys, you know, having other people and Eric inspiring people and, and people jumping on board, 
that's amazing. It's really, a really uh, uh, amazing thing. And um, also another thing, I have people, they'll jump on board, and, but they're just not consistent, right? So, you know, like me, I'm like, I'm like, like let's do this. Let's, let's go hardcore. Let's do what we got to do. Let's set up a schedule and let's, let's follow through with this. And, and most people, they just don't want to follow through with a schedule. So, um, you know, I just wanted to give you guys an update of what's going on here. So, so far, I got about 200 signatures. And, uh, you know, I plan on going out some more. So my question to you, Eric, is because it seems like you're, you know, you're pretty well versed in this. Uh, how many signatures you think uh, is, is a good amount? And also, um, you know, what should be the next steps after this? Because I, I also got an appeal at the international level uh, because I you know, filed charges against the president because he, he's not conducting meetings. He's not even trying to conduct meetings. And, um, you know, there's, there's ways to con conduct meetings safely. You just don't want to conduct them. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah. that's uh that's yeah. unacceptable unacceptable yeah. so what do you think is a good amount as far as like the signatures and uh so what you see uh could you you know give me some some uh some input yeah um so you should probably try to talk to um maybe some people who work a little closely with you or a little more you know a little more reliable and just say, hey, where do we cut this off at? I'm thinking, you know, I have no experience really. I'm just trying to think on on like a like a marketing level, like marketing type of mindset. And that is, it would be good to make sure you you do get the different sections. Make sure you have some from every section, right? Yeah. Every terminal. You may not get every station. That that's tricky but at least the section, you have some from each section, including, uh, including uh, uh, maintenance, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I, like so far I've been, you know, I got a schedule, it's actually on Google Docs and I just been, you know, two hours here, three hours here, just spending time at every depot. You know, I was at um, my old depot, the other day it was pretty positive, you know, um, that's where I started my career at. So it was very positive. And, you know, people just starting to see my face, you know, they ran, they know I ran last and I didn't just, you know, disappear. I'm still out here. So that's a good thing. But as far as getting people to take action, that's where, you know, they'll sign a petition. That, that's not a problem. They'll, they'll sign up. Oh, no, no problem. You know, but as far as getting people to commit time to like go around and get people to sign petitions or, even yeah. to hold Zoom meetings like this is like you know like how 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 much like how much advertisement you did right and then look how many people is on here I mean yeah this four, you got four people on here but I mean not not taking nothing away from you but I just feel like people are just I don't know man it's a lot that's a lot man it's like you got to keep on working with these people and they just don't want to well they really well, do nothing unless it, it comes to their doorstep they don't really see. I don't know, man. It's it's we we work with tough people, man. It's like, and I'm sure it wasn't always like this. You know, this is like kind of like a reflection of society in general. You know what I'm saying? And um, just waiting for daddy to come and save the day. Right. But daddy is not coming to save the day. No. And Kat, <laughs> and Kathy Kathy made a point in the chat. She said, "Ask ask the coworkers in Philly how many signatures do they think is the right number." And why don't they want to come to meetings? I mean, you know, really ask them, really gather the hard data, you know what I mean? And, and plug it in. I don't go to the meetings because um, I don't care. You know, put that down, doesn't care. <laughs> you know, and it, quantify this stuff and follow up at your leisure. Remember, you can only do so much, you know. Uh, uh, Mel and Kathy, uh, do you have any uh, suggestions or ideas even, or questions for, for Michael that might, that might assist him and assist all of us? Mel, do you want to say anything? Um, I couldn't think of nothing on my head right now. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking. It's okay. And if you come up with something later, you say, hey, hey, I got something to say. And we'll tell you, you can speak. <laughs> um, Wait a 
can't. What was the question? What, what was the question? How, like, how do I get, like, how do I get people, like, I just feel like it's, it's you know, like, I'm, I'm doing mostly all the work. And then, like, some people, it's like, you know, they'll, they'll jump on board, they'll do a little bit, and then they'll jump off, you know, back and forth. No type of consistency, you know, because mainly because I actually don't see a paycheck, right? Um, and how do we get people to, like, look at the bigger picture? Like, look, you know, this is our livelihood at stake. We got to get together. Obviously, our union president is a complete failure, right? Completely failing his position. The guy is an idiot. He really is. Right. <laughs> and I say, I'm not just saying this because he's my opposition, right? I really try to come and meet this guy and compromise with him. It's no compromise. The guy is a complete idiot. Like, really, idiot. Mm -hmm. You know? You're not so, alone. You're not alone. Like, his whole thing is basically just hide and just um, don't poke the bear type of mentality. But he got it screwed up, right? He, he thinks management is the bear. It should be the other way around. The worker should be the bear, the big bad bear, right? Mm -hmm. If we utilize our power the way, you know, once you know, was used in the past, right? And it's just throughout history, I uh, would be a force to reckon with, right? But mm -hmm. he's not, he's not doing it. And he's not even trying to look other and different ideas or anything like that. He just think his way or a highway. And that's a dangerous uh, mindset to have. You're right. So I don't, the only way to push him is to get more people on board. He can actually see a force, right? Not just one person or two, three people, but actually see 20, 25, 30 people, which out of 5,500 is not a lot of people, right? But he got to see something substantial, you know, like, and he's not seeing that. So how do you get people to like, you know, mm -hmm. to get on board? That's, that's well, the question. Yeah, I think it's really hard right now because of COVID. Because if mm -hmm. it wasn't for COVID, you could maybe try to have parties or lunches or something like that to bring people together in some kind of social situation where they might be more likely to to come and then you could always talk about the need for fighting back but i mean i'm afraid of the virus so i'm i'm very hesitant to uh, get together with people but you guys are stuck at work so i don't know maybe just have more discussions on your job when i was working i did try to have a lot of debates at work and um and i really did there was a lot of debates going on um and i think that building friendships is real important because then people maybe feel more trust yeah yeah it's hard though it's really hard no, I mean, I, I completely understand. And that, and that, and that um, spending time at these depots, I remember, you know, when I was at the bus depot the other day, it was like, it was just something about just actually sitting down and not being in a rush and just talking and just like hearing, you know, just opening up. That works. You're right. It works. Um, and, I, you know, I want to I go, you know, and um, I want to start doing that more. Like I said, people will support me and what I do. People even come out and vote for me. Right. People will mm -hmm. sign my petition. You know, that's a big thing to get signatures, account numbers. You know what I mean? It's right. like, who are you? You know what I mean? Like, you know, they, you know, they're like, oh, my name is on there, my account number. You know, maybe they might come after me. No, that's a, this is like a big step to actually have someone sign their name and put their account number. Am I right, Eric? It's like a big, it's a big step. Oh yeah. And I don't even ask for the uh, the, the account or the badge number. I just say, uh, how about a phone number? And they're like, oh, I don't know. Like, okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> I think he said, like, the main main thing why people don't uh, participate, because they will come after them. Yeah. I think that's, like, the main reason people don't participate, and they don't do a lot of that stuff. Or if they don't they're come afraid after them, of that. what they'll do is they won't fight as hard for them. It's like me. Me, this is actually, like, my first union company that I've worked for. I have, I have never worked for a union company, but I know a lot of my friends do. And their unions, they stick together. Let me tell you that. Yeah. And when they got to go fight, they go fight together. They're not like not, uh, not one person. Union. And that's, uh, that's what I noticed, the difference between them and, and the union that we're in, you know? Yes, yes. 
Let me do this. Let's do this. I want to pass a mo. I want to introduce a motion. I need someone to second it. Okay, we're we're practicing. <laughs> virtual, yes. We're practicing virtual union meetings. So yeah, you know, we got to really. We want to show the union bosses that it can be done if you try. <laughs> um, so they to pass. We want to show the members. What'd you say? But I said we want to show the members FM union leaders because. They yeah. know it can be done. They just don't want to do it. They don't want to do it because they right. think they, they everybody's no doing it. Kathy, they don't want no pressure. Kathy, you're you're offending me. Sorry, you're not supporting <laughs> me. You're not supporting the Justice Coalition. That's me. I take that personal. Oh, sorry. Right. Let me mute. <laughs> real quick. I'm gonna mute her real quick. I'm not taking this anymore. Uh, 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 I'm gonna call the manager on you. Now, uh, Eric, I got a question. Now, you, um, too. you too, sir. I'm going to call the manager on you. Supervisor Eric. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> sir. It's Eric, sir. President. <laughs> Eric, sir. Eric, God. sir. No, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Come no, uh, I, I missed the first, the first part of the meeting. Um, are, you guys uh, took a vote on whether or not this, this would be on Facebook? We recorded it for public, but but y'all can change your minds at the end of the meeting, and we can we can vote again. We can vote. Oh no, I'm I'm completely for it. Okay. I mean, okay. I mean, it's up to you guys, but I'm I'm yeah. all for it simply because. Yeah. You know this stuff. This stuff we gotta inspire people. We gotta yeah. let people yeah. know that look, it's it's a whole bunch of us out here. Yeah. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, this is our livelihood, and we're just trying to make things better for this union. You know what exactly. I'm saying? So, so, so on that note, to make things better, I want to introduce a motion to push forward to the uh, union worker uh, organizing section session. Can we jump to that and then come back? Uh, anyone want to second that motion? I second, second. it. <laughs> okay. See, now there's two people seconding it. This is not working. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Okay. So let's have a vote. I. If you want it, she said no. Oh, now you're just saying no. No, I said oh. Okay, I gotta go at twelve thirty. Okay. Oh no, wait a minute. How long is this gonna last? As long as you want. Forty-five minutes. <laughs> it's over now. <laughs> Kathy, thank you for being with us. If okay, you no. want to stay, you are welcome. Okay, thanks. Okay. Just don't be disruptive. Be re be respectful of the moderator. Sorry, show me sorry, respect. sorry. It's obedience. Obey, obey. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for being disruptive. I do have that tendency. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, okay. So real quick, we are talking about apathy, right? <clears throat> in the, in this uh, lesson from the secrets of a successful organizer, it's exactly what Michael was talking about. Mel was getting on, and actually Kathy and I were talking about it before the meeting started. <clears throat> I'm going to skip some stuff that, it, look in your agenda, you'll see it. I'm going to go right to the last paragraph, and it says this. If you push a little bit, um, I'm sorry, it may feel like your coworkers don't care, but push a little bit, and that's never really true as far as apathy. They're really not. It's really not that they don't want to do anything. It's really not that they're necessarily afraid. So everybody cares about something at work, according to this article we're, we're sharing. Just about everyone cares about their wages. For instance, everyone wants respect. No one's indifferent to whether their shift is miserable it's impossible to not care. There's always a way to reach people. And part of that fear is through education. So I'm telling you all right now, we are all off the clock, okay? We are not disparaging the company. We are not disparaging whatever, there, there, there's nothing they could hint to. And we are free, freely speaking and freely organizing. Not only should we do this, but we can do it. And Illinois and national labor law protect the right for us to do this. And we cannot be retaliated against. And, 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 and Mel, your union president is notorious for punishing uh, <laughs> members. You know, we got it on a lower level at 308. 
you know, those who do not, do, do not obey, okay? But know your rights, know the law. Um, you are free to organize. Check this out. When me and, and uh, Brother Andre went to Chicago and Kedzie Garages, this was the second time, to get people to come out for the December 22nd, uh, uh, 1 p.m. action where we are protesting to demand virtual union meetings. The union rep at Kedzie, yeah. as soon as we walked in, he started screaming at the top of his lungs, get out of here, you don't belong in here. And then he pointed at me, he said, "He's see him, he's a rail worker. He doesn't uh -huh. look bus operators use the toilet in the be in the train stations. Oh. I put my hands up like this. <laughs> you know, and, and, and he's like, don't you take any flyers from them. Don't you do this. They're, they don't belong here. They're enemies, blah, blah, blah. And, and we were just, okay. <laughs> and we, and, and, and we, he was, he was like freaky. He had his mask off and he's like screaming. Then the manager gets on the loudspeaker and says, all people who are disrupting will be written up with behaviorals. And we're like, oh my God. So, so I, I just said the couple people looked at, some of the coworkers looked at me, bus operators, they're like, looking at me funny. I was like, no, no, no. I, I always let <laughs> operators use the bathroom. I don't know any <laughs> rail people that do that, but those that do, we're really sorry about it. it it's wrong. But let's work on it. And and they're looking at me like, looking at him, and he's screaming, "No, no, don't you, don't you take anything because we have flyers, and don't you give anything." So we just walked out, <laughs> you know. And 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 so, at the other garage, we had a manager that told us. She said, "You can't pass out flyers here." We were in the break room. Mel, Michael, Kathy. So that's protected free speech area. Parking lots, all that stuff. So we're like, okay, all right. So can we talk to people? Say, all right, but that's it. Okay. But then Andre said, you know, my our rights, our free speech rights are being violated. And we might have to file an unfair labor practice. And manager said, well, just spell my name right. <laughs> so I guess we're going to do it, but it's like, okay, <laughs> we'll spell the name right. Um, but you see brothers and sisters, there's just no need for us to argue and to scream at each other. Right. We just do what we do. Let them do all the screaming. Right. It, and, and members will see it. They will be inspired. I had a guy, I had a guy the other day who was at one of their depots, bus depots and, you know, we got a little, we got into it. Uh, he, you know, he started raising his voice. So I, I stood my ground. I stood my ground. But, uh, you know, he, uh, he got up and was like, you know, getting all tough. And I thought he was going to get in my face, but he went to the uh, dispatcher on duty. Ah, get this guy out. He's not even supposed to be here. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, calm down. You know what I mean? Even the dispatcher was like, calm down. You know, but at that point, I just left because it was just toxic energy. You know what I mean? I was just like, I was tired, and I was just like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna deal with that shenanigans. You know, that's but good. Um, I know, I know, I know one thing that's that's really good and, and probably really helpful is to go with somebody else. Yeah. Anytime you go out, you know, um, just just to really, you know, go with someone. It's always good to have at least at least one or two people. You know, because you, you never know what can happen, especially. Yep. Uh, you know, and transit and status quo and, and all that stuff. These people got a lot of power. You know, they have promise, you know, different things. Oh, you'll get a seat at, you know, get to go to Las Vegas and become a delegate, um, you know, crab fest, you know, they're promised, oh, Dave, oh, Dave, Dave off is like crack cocaine. It's like a drug. It's like a yeah. drug. Crack cocaine yeah. to a fiend. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. That's, that's what they live for. Days off, time off of work, you know, they got, they, you know, they don't really want to do the job or per se, you know, um, so. It is, it is. Yeah, I just, yeah I mean, but I, I, I did read, I did read, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I did read that the organizer and like that, and um, it's, it's in it by itself. And I was just thinking like, you know what, I, I, I got to get my team, my core 
team, you know, to the point where they can know about, you know, the organizing and, and it's like a, it's a science in it by itself. Right. So as I, the more I looked, the more I was like, wow, this is, this is really getting deep. Watch it, Mel. Oh, he got it muted. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Go ahead, Michael. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. So, no, I mean, no, it's okay. I mean, I just, you know, I just wanted to, you know, uh, it, I, I like, I think it's a lot of time, you know, it can be done, but it's a lot of time that you have to invest in it and also be willing to learn new things, new tactics. And, um, you know, the schedule part that helped me out a lot. A lot of time, half the battle was just, you know, going out, you know, yeah. just going out. That's, that's, that's half the battle, letting people see your face. And, um, yep. you know, that's so they could build, you know, like you said, build, build trust. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, that's very important. Yes. And, 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 you know, just take your time. Sometimes take a break. Every little bit counts. And, and Mel, even you, you know, even though you're part-time and people will say, oh yeah, you just got here. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, you just say, well, you don't have to be part-time or here for very few years to know when something's rotten and it stinks. You know, and they're gonna hit you, hit you with that all the time, right? You know, what yeah. are you you're a rookie. You don't know anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> and plus, CTA workers aren't the only ones who are suffering from this kind of bullshit. Part-time jobs, low wages, you know, harassment, fear, all that stuff. It's happening at all the jobs. Yep. Yeah, and 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 that, and that should give more people ammo to get involved. You know, like Mel, uh, more of a reason to get involved. You know, to say, "Hey, listen, you know, we can we we can actually make more money later on down the line. Like, we can actually get what full timers got later on down the line. You know, that could be us. You see what I'm saying? But you would think that more people would join, but it's like I, I'm not sure what's going on with people nowadays. People are very they they are very content. They get content really fast. Um, also, um, Mel and, 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 and everybody else watching, um, get your constitution for your union, um, uh, your bylaws, know your, have your bylaws because, um, as you speak up, uh, and, and like you said, Mel, there's a lot of us that are afraid, right? Cause we just don't know the rules and the laws and stuff. And they're not a lot. It's not a lot to know. Um, but you want to be able to argue. Uh, 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 respectfully, your point. Um, I'm being, uh, Andre are being charged uh, by our union's presidents for what's called dual unionism. And um, so they're going to try to, by, by, by charging us, you know, they're going to try to put us in bad standing and all that stuff, uh, which could affect our jobs. Um, unfortunately, their argument or dual unionism doesn't match because I know what it is. And dual unionism is you promote everyone leaving our union to go join, you know, whatever union, you know, the, the, the uh, SEIU or something like that. But we're not doing that. We're trying to get people to be active in our union, take control of our union. So, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's, I guess it's you're going to take some hits and you're going to take some losses, you know. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry too much about the charges. Yeah, I mean, cause they they put me up on charges a few years ago, and uh, it was something really simple. I mean, something really silly. And they, yeah. you know, they they you know, I was I was doing my this is when I first created the two thirty four union buzz, and I was you know I was very active writing emails to the bosses, you know, pretty much you know uh, sharing my concerns, you know, see something, say something. Yeah. you know, behind that logic. So right. it was like, I, I, I couldn't, I didn't, I couldn't go to the union because everything with the union was just slow. You know, it was yeah. like, I, I, I never got a positive re resolution. So I, I started going to the bosses and that's what they had a problem. And they said, I attempted to, to negotiate with management. They brought me up on charges. My own business agent brought me up on charges and they had someone, I didn't, I represented myself and I did fine with just representing myself. But on his on vice president represent uh you know my business agent 
which was silly wow. in it by itself. Man. But the bottom line, I, I wouldn't worry about it. It's a dog and pony show, the kangaroo court. Yeah. You know, but you do want to go prepared, have, you know, have some questions, have a closing argument. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have a, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have an open argument. I wouldn't even, you know, have an open argument because at the end of the day, they got to prove that you <laughs> did something wrong. Yeah. You know, yeah. the burden is on them. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> It's funny. It's kind of funny, it though. Funny. It's, it's like, okay, great, thanks. <laughs> did you get Did you get a date? No, no, no. I don't think they're gonna do it because we're we're really clowning them really bad, you know. <laughs> so, so it's it's kind of gotten to the point where I'm like, would you please bring me up on charges already? Because if they do it, they're gonna have to have a virtual union meeting because you can't bring up the charges except in a meeting. So we're gonna have to have a virtual union. So I'm like, hey. Good, bring us up in charges so we can finally have a virtual union meeting. <laughs> but could but couldn't they delay? That's another thing that uh oh, that, that yeah. concerns me a little bit. They could delay and also with the company too. The company uh can write people up and they can delay and they could just be like, Well, you know, we, we couldn't bring this up because you know, according to the contract, you got a certain amount of time to bring yeah. up discipline, yeah. right? So now they they could they could bring it up four or five months to be like, Oh, well, we had to delay it because yeah. of COVID. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. It's like a lot with this COVID, but I don't think it's, it's going to help us. And that's why it's so important to organize. Yeah. That's why it's so important to come together and talk about the problems and stay unified. Because yeah. our, our bosses, our, our union leadership, they up there in the ranks of the bosses, right? In terms of salary, comfort, um, you know, perks, et cetera, et cetera, right? So they're... You know, uh, with all that's going on, they're not going to side with the members. They're going to side with the bosses. You understand what I'm saying? Because they, they don't, they, they don't, they look at us like expendables. Like we just, you know, but that's why it's so important. Yes. To, to, to this, and you said it in one, in one of your uh, Facebook posts, you said elections are overrated. And that's, and I totally agree with you on that. It, it is overrated. Yep. It's us. We are the, but go ahead, Kathy, Mel, anything you want to um, add? I, I was going to ask a question. Was there a young man from Philadelphia on this meeting the last time? Yes, that's him. And, that's me. Oh, now did you have glasses on last time? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I, okay. I had glasses. I didn't have my hat on either. Okay, okay. You fooled me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was it. This, this, is, this is the tough look. Oh, you know, I got okay. <laughs> I got the, the 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 nerdy look. I can go, you know, negotiate with you know, with the bosses. Wear my nerdy oh, okay. look, you know, wear the glasses, and I got the tough look, like you know, back oh, okay. off, you know, <laughs> the okay. best of both worlds over here. All right, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey Mel, did you have any concerns or questions or anything you wanted to share? Um, not a, not right now. I wasn't able to um uh, write anything down, but um, okay. I, ju I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to to do this for everyone else that maybe that there should be uh joining us and 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 growing a bigger group and be more supportive. You know, um, there's a lot of people that just talk, but they don't you don't see any actions from them. Yeah. And that's what we need more. We need more people to take actually actions and not just speaking on it. You know, you see a and lot of people just complaining and saying stuff, but they, they're actually not taking any actions towards the issue. And, and, you know, actually, though, it's good when people do complain. We do want complaints because that's how you can come up with solutions for problems. But your point is, OK, well, don't just stay there and complain, you know, do mm -hmm. too. take it to the next level. Exactly. So, and, and, you know, we can all do that. We can all, we, Mel, you could start a group at, 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 at your garage, you know what I mean? On whatever issue you want, you know, and it's, it's, uh, and there's some pretty, pretty interesting characters there of, of, of revolutionary caliber that mm -hmm. uh, you should uh, definitely, you may have already connected with. I just want to show this picture real quick. Uh... Let's see. This is a photo from 1979 of Forest Glen Garage during the strike. That was the last strike at the CTA. So all the buses were parked 
and Forrest Glen. <laughs> so Forrest Glen is a special place. <laughs> it's just different type of people now. Different type. Yeah. Yeah, but we all have the potential. And you got to understand, for generations, CTA mm -hmm. workers have been beat down real hard. Yeah. Especially by, you know, management principals, politicians, and union bosses. It's, and, just, and, it's systematic. It's the same thing with Philly. Same thing with Philly, New York. Business well, at least, at least in New York, I'll tell you one thing good about New York. And I, and I, it's a, like, um, you might want to start looking. I mean, you already do it, Eric. You know, start looking at their playbook and how they do things. The members out there are more engaged. I, I feel like, you know, members are, they're not afraid to speak up out there. And they got different coalitions. It's not just one group that's doing, that's, op, you know, the opposition is just, it's multiple coalition out there. Um, multiple members is 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 highly uh, energized union, should I say? Yeah, you know, like John Ferretti, for example. He's he's a uh, you know yeah. the guy you introduced me to, um, and you know he's he he just won his e board position. Yeah, he's a revolutionary, you know, just like yeah. us. And yeah. he was you know just keep on going, keep on going, keep on pushing, keep on pushing, and eventually you're gonna get there. And and we we also you know again. We're, we're not trying to tell people that you have to get elected to, to anything, but sometimes it happens, you know, but it's better that the members be empowered and it, it does start with us and not the elections. Well, let's wrap it up. Um, we have a little history lesson. So every, every uh, meeting we have a little organizing lesson and a little history lesson. There's always an educational uh, component uh, to our meetings. So um, in 1963, uh, that was the day that 400 photo engravers at six New York City newspapers walked off the job. Members of the AFL's International Photo Engravers Union had voted down arbitration. That means that, you know, they didn't like the contract, the company didn't like the, the counter offer, so they, had, they went to an arbitrator. All but one local newspaper, the New York Herald Tribune were idled as 20,000 newspaper workers refused to cross the engraver's picket line. So, so the engravers, just so you know real quick, there was just a old way to try that newspapers would publish photographs. So it was a more labor intensive job because it was not in any bit uh, digital like it is now. Uh, six days into the strike, that newspaper suspended operations as well. Writers at the New Yorker magazine remarked, they were curled up with the Wall Street Journal, the Daily Worker, and a two day old copy of La Prince. In the decades before digital images, photo engraving was a labor intensive process. Highly skilled workers made metal plates from which newspaper images were printed. Photo engravers had been working without a contract since the end of October. So they, they were uh, just like a month without a contract. We're 12 months. Think about that. Um, they demanded a $15 per week raise. The newspaper association was only willing to grant $3.75. The other newspaper unions had been offered similar wage and benefit packages far below their demands. They knew that whatever they won or lost depended on the victory of the photo engraver strike. So they walked out in solidarity. Federal mediators intervened in an attempt to settle the strike. Hysteric newspaper editors across the country shrieked that the union had accomplished what the government would never dare to do, subvert the freedom of the press. <laughs> they sulked that the strike had broken 35 years of industrial harmony and peace adding that the ungrateful workers didn't appreciate how good they had it. Hmm. <laughs> After 11 days, members voted to end the walkout and let a fact-finding board solve the dispute. Three months later, that board upheld the Newspaper Association's original offer of 3.75 a week plus benefits. This was a loss. Or was it? What do y'all think? Go ahead, Mel. What do you what do you think about that? Was that a loss for the for the workers, or was it a gain? What What did you think? 
In between? <laughs> I think it was in between because, I mean, they gained some, but they didn't really gain what they actually were fighting for. What do you think they gained? Um, what they, um, well, like walking out of the jobs and everything, they saw that that was the big bosses. They saw that that, that could have happened. And it was, um, they were able to, um, to stop all kinds of work. And so they had the power for that, but, you know, I, I believe that they, they lost in game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, 1953, that was pretty much at the end of all of the, the power of strikes, you know, really it all kind of ended in the six, the strikes, not the strike power strikes, but the power of the unions. Um, you know, and, and, and because in the sixties, that's when that whole thing concession bargaining started coming up, you know? Yeah. How about you, Michael? What did you what think? What was the question? What was the question, Eric? Well, 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 this history that I've read about the engravers union, uh, do you think that it was a loss or do you think it was a gain? Mel says it was kind of a little bit of both. So they, they, I'm sorry, because when you, when you was, I was a little distracted when you was going, um, when you was reading the history. Okay. So I was a little distracted, but just briefly, like, what, what was the story about? Well, the, new, the, the photo engravers uh, had a huge strike, and they, they developed a lot of solidarity. Okay. Other workers uh, at newspapers around the country uh, uh, supported them, but uh, uh, in solidarity, wouldn't cross the picket lines, that kind of thing. Yeah. But uh, they, they, they ended up having to go with um, the- But they got off for our first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Um, hmm, this is a good question. Um, I mean, how long was they on strike for again? Uh, it looks like what was it? What was it? Six days? What did I? Oh, six days. Couple days was it? Oh man. 11, 11 days. Sorry, 11 days. 11 days. 11 days. I would say, I would say that, I mean, I will agree with what Mel said. It's like, in one way, it, it's good because it's like, you know, um, look, we're standing in solidarity. You know, we're going to make our presence known. Yeah. Right. And, you know, in the future, hopefully they'll think twice about just giving us this scratch, you know, but on the other hand, it's just like, you know, negotiations at the end of the day, you want to win, right? You got to win. Yeah. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So in order to win, you have to prepare, right? It's like, it's like playing chess. You know, you got to prepare for your next move. Everything got to be outlined. You know, just like they have their strategy and they spent, uh, you know, money and effort, et cetera, you know, to push us and string us along to get their desirable outcome. We got to do the same. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, you know, at, at the very least, at the most, should I say, um, we could look at that like uh, it's, it's, it's learned, like it's a learning, you know, and, and – and something interesting about this, though, is that this, how the solidarity is so, so important, how it's important for, for workers across state lines to coordinate. Because look at this. The other newspaper unions have been offered similar wage and benefit packages, according to the, the history. But, and they were far below their demands, right? But they knew that whatever they won or lost depended on the photo engravers. So the photo engravers kind of kept, I think, kept everyone else from losing more, <laughs> even though they didn't seem to gain anything, you know? 
Right. I, I don't know. This is history, right? And we're interpreting things. Kathy, what do you think? Um, well, I think that um, I agree with some of what, what everybody said. It was a combination of winning and losing. And they had the solidarity of the other workers and the support. But then, and I was going to say this before, that um, strikes change people. I haven't been in a big strike, but I've talked to some people who have. In fact, when the teachers went on strike the first time, one of our co-workers in 308 was married to a teacher, and he went to the picket line a couple times, and he said that that changed his life. So that's a gain for all those strikers and their families at the time. But um, their history teaches us that they probably shouldn't have gave up. You know, they gave up after right. 11 days and they, the, that, they, that negotiating board, whoever they were, you know, they didn't get their raise. So that part was bad. Right. And it's and it's it kind of also supports the fear of loss. So, well, we may not win, so let's not even try. You know, mm -hmm. that kind of attitude. I don't know. Anyway, and and that I think that that really holds us back too. You know, not even just striking. Not I'm not even we could yeah, that's what striking too, but just the fact of trying to convince a union officer <laughs> to join you in a simple protest outside the workplace and they're like everything's fine if you would just obey the rules okay can we just pro don't don't you think that this benefit and this is this working condition is inferior well well we'll negotiate that at at, at, at the bargaining table yeah but who who is going to put pressure on them to get to, to to give up what we want Look, there's we we can't protest. There's a no strike clause in our contract, which is a lie. But you know, it's always an excuse after excuse after excuse because they're afraid of looking like we didn't win. You know what I mean? And I think we have to get over that. I mean, it's like a real fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if any of y'all been in real fights or you do martial arts or boxing, but wrestling or whatever, judo, jujitsu, you're gonna get hit. You're gonna get pinned, you're gonna get arm locked. If you're in a knife fight, you're gonna get cut. But but fight. <laughs> Don't just... <laughs> hey, can I add something? Yeah. You know what would be really interesting about this uh this story about the strikers? Was it the strikers who said, Yeah, we're ready to give up? We got all this support, but but we're ready to give up anyway. Or was it the union leadership putting pressure on people? That that would be interesting to know what happened and how close was the vote to uh, you know to end the walkout. That would have been interesting too. But we don't know that. These little details that we should always question, right? Because I guarantee you, all of us, Mel, Michael, everyone watching. When you talk about strikes and you talk about job action and direct action and public action, you will get business unionists that will tell you, yeah, yeah, it didn't work for so-and-so. Look at what they did. And look, so you got to break it down to them. Well, why did that happen? Why did they quit? Why did they give in? You look at New York City, their last strike, TW100, their, their union leadership pretty much said, look, Y'all voted against the contract. I'm going to sign it anyways. <laughs> it was seven votes, again, more against. But he just overrode it. Tucson overrode it. So don't talk to me about, well, you know, it didn't work. A strike didn't work if, you're, if your leadership went against the members. Right. Your, your leadership is the wrong doer. OK. Finally. December 22nd, 1 p.m. Please be there. And in Philadelphia, we may have a solidarity action in Philadelphia. Uh, Brother Michael and, and, and the uh, members of TW234 who are in the 234 Buzz uh, Caucus, they may be protesting in solidarity 
as well demanding for virtual union meetings? Yeah, well, you know, well, that's, we're still working, um, working all the details out. Yeah. If we're ever going to uh, have a protest in front of Union Hall, yeah. um, you know, we'll see. We, we, we're still working out, but we, we definitely have to put the pressure on the union. They uh, let us down tremendously. Yep. Um, and we have to move forward and we have to fight and we have to fight some more. And, and you have to fight. And you have to be loud. <laughs> wait, 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 I got mine too. <laughs> hey, I got a question, you guys. Yeah. What about, what about that petition for the warming of the buses? What's happening with that? The union took it over or, 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 or I, what? I, I, Joaquin had to do a run. He, he had to work today. Um, I wanted him to report and I, he seen, I think he was in a rush to get out to work. So, uh, <laughs> there it is. Okay. Uh oh, I'll report that defect. Me and Michael got the same one. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> yeah, sick and tired of being sick and tired. So yeah, yeah, the warming bus petition, I think it's still, it looks live. It looks like it's still going live. And yeah, I think the union leadership is trying to, uh, 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 yeah, acquire it and, uh, which is okay, yeah. right? There was, there was a post on that union page and I, I believe it was the bus garage on 103rd where people were also complaining about lack of warming buses and, and a lack of ability to take their lunch and a, and a bunch of stuff. So yeah. that seems like a good issue. It is, we gotta keep it going. <laughs> um, so that'd be it. We're gonna, uh, we got a motion to conclude the meeting. I second it. <laughs> you say aye. 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 Don't forget, be a leader. You don't need a leader. You're the leader, right in the mirror. Exactly. And please, be active. It's your union. It doesn't belong to the bosses. It's yours. Thanks, <laughs> Power to the people. One more thing I forgot. Yeah. Next meeting, gotta schedule it. We can't, we gotta, it's gonna have to be in January. Anyone got a, uh, a it's got to be a Tuesday or a Wednesday in January. Can it be a Wednesday at 1030? The second, the second, sure. the second January, uh, the second Wednesday of January. Is that okay? Works for me. Well, for me, I don't know what my schedule will look like, but if I'm available, I'll join. That would be great. And I'll, and, and we'll be, we'll be posting it. So we're going to say, Joaquin and uh, Michael, you have a, a say in this? You're in the meeting. That's all, all good. <clears throat> You're easy. So we're going to schedule for January 13th, okay? Okay. Yep. I'll be sending uh, updates uh, to you all soon. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, nice meeting you. We're still you recording, guys. okay? Record for public, right? Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Keep it that way. All right, y'all. And those who are watching and listening, send your messages to us, 224-935-3075, so we can address it at the next meeting. And have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> right.